Minister of Justice and Solicitor General Tala Shendro, and Associate Minister of Immigration and Multiculturalism Mohammad Yasin, and the lead pastor of Calgary Vietnamese Alliance Church, Pastor Thai Yon. And I would like to thank the pastor and the church for an excellent service for hosting today's announcement. I know that everyone is happy to see once again all the members of each congregation and parishioners of every church, mandir, mosque, or temples. And having said that, let me now call on the Premier to pro provide the announcement today. Thank you. Thank you very much, MLA Singh. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, Pastor Wynn, for welcoming us here uh, to uh, your House of Prayer Alliance Church. I really well appreciate the warm welcome of you and, and your congregation. And it's so touching to see that uh, your congregation was founded by Vietnamese refugees uh, to Canada who came here fleeing communism uh, 40 years ago. And it's wonderful to see how your community has thrived but also uh, sad to do, contemplate what brings us here today. On July uh, the 2nd of last year, this church was attacked, excuse me, July the 4th, it was attacked in an act of hateful uh, anti-Christian violence. Too often in our peaceful and pluralistic society, we see acts of hatred against vulnerable communities, uh, including faith communities, uh, and uh, from different traditions. Uh, that is why uh, last summer, I announced at the Al Rashid Mosque in Edmonton the launch of Alberta's security infrastructure program designed to provide funding to vulnerable community institutions uh, like mosques and synagogues, uh, temples, uh, gurdwaras and churches and, and uh, schools and other institutions that might be targeted by hate-inspired violence. We announced a $100,000 grant that's available to help them improve their security infrastructure. Uh, including things like blast-resistant film on uh, glass, reinforced secure doors, perimeter fences, uh, monitoring cameras, and other security systems, as well as some assistance for uh, security personnel at, at, and training. All of this because public safety is a public responsibility, and we have a particular responsibility uh, to ensure the safety of vulnerable communities that are targeted by hate-inspired violence. Now, last summer, uh, shortly after we announced the security infrastructure program, we saw a spate of hateful violence across Canada directed at Christian communities. Uh, some 50 churches across the country were targeted for vandalism uh, or violence, in some cases, devastating ca acts of arson. For example, the St. John the Baptist Church in Morinville, north of Edmonton, a historic church uh, very important to the local indigenous community that was burned to the ground. Many other efforts across the uh, province of Alberta, uh, over at least over a dozen uh, churches that were targeted last summer uh, for violence. And here at this uh, House of Prayer Alliance Church, we saw a uh, terrible and, and potentially deadly act of arson on July 4th uh, last summer, where um, some people who were inspired by hatred in their hearts uh, tried to burn this church down, and they did cause enormous damage, hundreds of thousands of dollars of property damage. Thank you to the Calgary uh, Police Service and the uh, Calgary firefighters for responding quickly uh, to extinguish the fire. Had, they, had it not been for their rapid response, uh, this church undoubtedly would have burnt to the ground like many others did across Canada. When you think about this being a church that houses a refugee immigrant community, it makes all of this particularly perverse. Some people tried to diminish or even defend these acts of violence last summer, connecting them to the uh, terrible injustice of the Indi Indian, Indian residential school system. I think we are all united in condemning the wickedness of that system that uh, separated uh, parents from their children and uh, did so much to destroy indigenous culture and language. But, but that recognizing that time of injustice in no way can justify acts of hateful violence 
inflicted against faith communities. And I think that uh, the fact this was targeting a uh, community of refugees was a particularly vile expression of that anti-Christian bigotry. Now, because when we first announced the security infrastructure program at the Al Rashid Mosque last summer, we, uh, this is a platform commitment that we made to Albertans in the 2019 election based on a program that I actually uh, helped to develop and implement uh, on behalf of uh, the government of Canada. We uh, uh, set, uh, established this program to respond to similar acts of violence. And I can tell you, as a federal minister, I have visited places of worship um, that were spared uh, acts of potentially devastating arson because of the federal security infrastructure project. Like, for example, the um, mosque in Gatineau, uh, just east of Ottawa, where several years ago, intruders tried to throw a Molotov cocktail through the windows, but they failed because of blast-resistant film uh, that had been installed on those windows as a direct result of the security infrastructure project. So this program can make a difference, and potentially it could save lives. Now, as I say, since we launched the program last summer uh, at a $2 million amount, we saw uh, this rash of uh, hateful violence targeting uh, churches. And so uh, we believe it's necessary significantly to expand this program to assist uh, faith and cultural communities uh, in improving their security against similar acts of violence. That is why in the recent throne speech, uh, the government said through the lieutenant governor that quotes, last summer, some 50 Christian churches in Canada, many of them in Alberta were destroyed or damaged by arson, vandalism, and other forms of hate-inspired violence. These were attacks on the constitutionally protected freedom of religion and our belief in peaceful pluralism. That is why the government will more than double the size of the security infrastructure program which has launched, which was launched last year to upgrade security for community facilities targeted by hate crimes, including mosques, synagogues, gurdwaras, munders, and other vulnerable facilities. So I'm pleased to be here today to announce that the security infrastructure program is being expanded to a $5 million a year program. Pastor Wynn has told us that uh, as a part of their effort to rebuild this church, they've had to invest over uh, $10,000 in new security systems, but they still would like a perimeter fence to hard, further harden their security. Those are exactly the kinds of security investments that will be eligible for re reimbursement through Alberta's security infrastructure project. So Pastor, we're looking forward to your application so that we can help your community, not only to recover, but also to prevent a similar act of violence in the future. I understand that to date we have um, uh, received and approved 110 applications since the program was launched last summer, and this additional funding will make uh, the, the program available to hundreds of other uh, faith and vulnerable uh, community inst uh, institutions and facilities across the province. And so with that, I'm happy to introduce uh, Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, the Honorable Tyler Shandro, for a few additional remarks. Thank you so much, Premier, and uh, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Peter, uh, for for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ty, for having us uh, at your church for for this announcement and for for welcoming us with uh, the service this uh, this morning. Now, as you know, the security infrastructure program was created as a response to a, a couple of terrible facts, terrible, irrefutable facts. Uh, the First of all, that places of worship, educational facilities, and other gathering places are frequent targets of vandalism and other hate-motivated crimes. And the second, that those who work at and, uh, and worship at these facilities should not have to bear the burden as well as the cost of protecting these facilities on their own. In its original incarnation from last summer, the, grants uh, the grant program's annual funding was $1 million. And we soon increased it to $2 million as we heard positive feedback from affected communities and organizations. Eligible applicants could receive grants of up to $10,000 to pay for security assessments and specialized security training for staff members, and up to $90,000 to purchase security equipment. So for example, alarm systems, fencing, cameras, motion detectors, 
as well as anti-graffiti sealant. Now, when we began accepting applications, it quickly became clear that demand for the program was greater than its initial budget could accommodate. And that's why we made sure that in Budget 22, we would more than double the program's annual funding from $2 million to, as Premier said, $5 million. And this year, there will be two no uh, nomination rounds, one in the spring and one in the fall, which we will officially announce at uh, dates which will be uh, closer to the draws. Uh, and, and while we wish the, the, the need for this program didn't exist, we are pleased to make this money available to the groups that need it. And the remainder of the program remains the same. Facilities eligible to pay for funding includes places of worship, and that includes, as Premier said, temples, mosques, synagogues, gurdwaras, and churches, uh, private educational institutions where there is a diverse student body, and other facilities associated with vulnerable groups, such as community centers, cemeteries, uh, burial grounds, and shelters. Our commitment is to stand up to intolerance, to keep all Albertans safe, and to forcefully prosecute hate crimes, and this remains as strong as ever. So thank you very much. I'd like now to welcome Pastor Ty to come up and say a few words. Pastor Ty, do you mind coming up? I am Thái Nguyen, lead pastor in this church. I'm very happy to welcome you to our church today. Most of us are Vietnamese refugees who escaped Vietnam to live in Canada. When we first came here to Canada, we worked hard to earn a living, and we also use our hard money to, uh, to build the church and to have a place to worship God. And we are very proud of the church here. But last summer, the fire called huge damage to our church building. The police says that somebody intentionally burned our church from outside and the flame, the flame came inside through the window and destroyed almost everything in the sanctuary. <coughs> As you know, not only our church, many other churches were burned and attacked throughout Canada. But in our situation, because of the misunderstanding in the insul insurance policy, we rely that we have only insurance for uh, liability and not the insurance for property. <coughs> In addition to the financial pressure brought by the pandemic COVID-19, this fire has put us under huge financial burden. <coughs> June like last summer, I never forget it was a nightmare. Every day I came to the church, seeing the destructive scene. Everything destroyed. I did not know what to do. I just sat on the step in front of the church, waiting for something. And even I did not know what I was waiting for. <coughs> Until one day, a native Indian woman came in to visit. Of course, I did not know exactly if she was a native um, or not, but she looked like a native woman to me. And after praying, she gave me $10, saying that for rebuild, rebuilding the church. It sounds very uh, ridiculous to me at that time, but when she had gone into her old car, I still hold her $10 in my hand. And I think about fundraising, the idea of fundraising to rebuild the church came from that. And we start doing the fundraising with the help of Western Canadian districts. The other Vietnamese church helped us too. Of course, it was not easy in the COVID time. But as you see today, we have prepared a lot so we can come back. We spend almost more than 500,000 for fund for, from fundraising, but still many things left undone. We have no fund to build a new fence around the building to get uh, more security from hedge cram. The burn, the burn window still not repaired. As you can see, the sound system 
the washroom kitchen, especially our kitchen one is not work yet. We still cannot cook. The kitchen is very important to us where we can provide food for the hunger, feed the single mom and her children, the people who are forgotten, people who are in need. So we need the fund to repair our new kitchen. <coughs> But at least now we can repair our sanctuary already by the law of order and meet Pitrico of God in our fundraising. We want to suppose that we are forgotten, but today we're very happy to see you come here. The government of Anbasta, we are encouraged a lot by the new that the government have some program to protect churches from hate crime. Our church know the pain of being targeted by hate crime. And we are still trying to repair all the damage caused by, caused by the arson last summer. The protection the grant made available can make a real difference in churches and local groups like, uh, like ours who come together to worship and to serve our country. Today, I'm just telling you a sad story with happy ending, we may know the pain, we may lose something, but we will never lose our faith in God, never lose our trust in this country, the country that brings us a better life. We are proud of to be a Christian as long as we, we are proud to call ourselves Canadian. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. That concludes the formal portion of today's announcement. And we're now going to move over to a media Q&A. <clears throat> Just a reminder to folks here in person to please state your name as, and, as well as your outlet, uh, and in addition to who you're asking the question to. Um, and with that, we're going to start in the rooms before finishing on the phone. So uh, please go to the Unimic with the piece of red tape on it if you have a question for Premier. And I think uh, we'll make pastors a statement available for, for journalists who, would, who might like that. Um, just first, uh, you know, one thing that's on a lot of Calgarians' minds, specifically those in the Beltline right now, is what we're seeing with protests. These have been continuing for some time now, despite the fact that most of those mandates have been removed. We're also seeing a clash with counter-protesters yesterday. Videos have surfaced online with police um, pushing back against those counter protests with bikes um, and we had the police commissioner suggesting that there will be complaints that will be filed today they're expecting that um, you know do you have any response first of all about what's happening downtown does more need to be done and um, yeah thank you well obviously Canadians have a constitutionally protected right to freedom of speech freedom of assembly freedom to protest uh, we must recognize that it's up to local police services to determine uh, how best to, to maintain that peaceful right in a way that respects the rights of others to go about their uh, ordinary lives. And uh, so it's not for the provincial government to dictate uh, police operations. That is up to Calgary Police Service. They're accountable to the police commission. Um, and uh, I, I would just say I, I'm not quite sure what the protest is about because Alberta effectively does not have any more public health measures. They, they've all been lifted some time ago. And um, I uh, would suggest that, that maybe people could find more productive ways of uh, expressing their, their frustration. But maybe here's an idea. How about we all just move on from the frustration of COVID? How about we leave it in the rearview mirror? I mean, there are still some remaining federal travel restrictions, which we think are, are wrong. Uh, we, we have a, a motion in the legislature calling on the federal government to drop the pointless uh, federal travel restrictions. Um, but. I, I guess the point I would make is we could spend the rest of our lives in this society arguing over COVID, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me, or we could just move forward. And here's the good news. Alberta's emerging into a period of dynamic economic growth. There's lots of good news now and on the horizon. I say let's embrace that, that positive future as opposed to uh, getting stuck in the division of the past two years. Every family, every community, business, faith group, they, we all know people have been divided over COVID. Uh, let's stop accentuating the division. Let's find ways to come together uh, as Albertans. 
Thanks, Premier. Uh, just seeing if there's another question from the floor here. Oh, yep. Sorry, you're multitasking there. You if, can stand behind if, me if you like. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Helen Pike, CBC. On this announcement today, um, you know, police have um, had an increase in hate mo motivated crime investigations and reports. How does this help average people, or are there are there is there anything the government to, can do to to because this is more of an organizational, institutional, almost preventative announcement? Yeah. Well, this the security infrastructure project is one important part of our effort to defend vulnerable com communities from potentially violent hate crimes. Um, as I've said, I've seen firsthand how the investments that this program will make available has stopped um, places of worship from being burned to the ground. And so it's very important. Pastor wants to install a security uh, fence at the perimeter here uh, that can better uh, prevent intruders from approaching the church. That's exactly, they've, they've installed, well, I shouldn't tell them, say all of the security stuff, but they've already made over $10,000 of investments in security, uh, system upgrades. And this is a small refugee church. They can't afford this kind of stuff. And as I said, uh, public safety is a government responsibility. That's why we're stepping forward with these funds. But it's at the same time very important for the police uh, to do everything they can uh, to bring people to account. Uh, obviously, there's a criminal investigation into this attempted act of arson. Uh, I'm told that uh, no charges have been laid. Uh, I don't know where the investigation is at, but I, I do hope police services are, are prioritizing these acts of hatred uh, and, and uh, hate-inspired violence. Um, they terrorize communities. That's why I think these are in, in, in acts of terror. They are designed to, to make people afraid. In fact, th this also housed, housed a Filipino congregation, and they shared the space with the Vietnamese community, and the Filipino congregation has gone somewhere else because of the, their, their faith lives have been totally disrupted by this. So this is tragic, and uh, I, I'll ask Minister Shandro if he could speak more to this, but um, we, uh, you know, that there are targeted uh, resources and funds available to police services to uh, investigate uh, hate crimes, and I, uh, I hope that they're taking these uh, incidents very seriously. The only thing else I would add is the uh, what you pointed out to me yesterday regarding um, hate crime. So I, I would say yes. I mean, we have included that in speech from the throne as well. We will be making some further announcements fairly soon about further work that we'll be doing when it comes to because I think the, the question was about what else can be done when it comes to the hate crimes that, that some vulnerable populations are seeing. And so we're, we're looking forward to making some announcements fairly soon on that. And uh, Helen, do you have a follow-up? Oh, absolutely. Today? Yeah, Mohammed. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, in addition to this $5 million that's announced today, uh, we, have, we are also working on Alberta-wide hate crime unit uh, that would be working with law enforcement agencies and all that to make sure that uh, these crimes do not take place in the first place. And also, we are going to appoint a liaison, community liaison, who would be working with places of worship as well as multicultural places uh, to ensure what additional uh, concerns or uh, comments they have with regard to protect their places and, 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 and their people. So there's a number of things that are on the go and I encourage people to apply for this additional five million, which is five times more than the initial $1 million that was doubled to two million and now it's at additional 5 million, total of 70 million, 7 million. So people who have been inquiring about this, I know there's a number of people who have been talking about this and they wanted to apply in the last go around, but they got late for whatever reason. Uh, here is your time. Please come forward and, and, and apply for this funding. And we are doing everything that we could do to uh, make it easier, to make it uh, safe for people to come to this province, uh, work, raise their family, and be happy. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, you can go ahead, Helen, and then we'll grab the uh, follow-up from Global just after that, because I should have asked for that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who to direct this to, but I'm just wondering with this funding, how many um, institutions or groups will this help um, sure. in numbers? So, so far, 110 applications have been, have been approved, and I understand the average uh, grant has been in the range of, of $10,000. So. Based on that, this could uh, be uh, up to 500 facilities if it's an average grant of, 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 of $10,000. Uh, 
Uh, but if the grant requests come in at a higher dollar amount and they're closer to 100,000, then this might make it available to, let's say, 50 to 100 additional facilities. It really depends on the amount of the grants that people apply for, how much they spend, and for how much they are reimbursed. But I think over time, we can, we'll be able, with this program, uh, because we intend to continue it into the future, I think we can offer this to um, uh, hundreds and potentially, in, in the long term, thousands of vulnerable community institutions. Uh, we don't know exactly how many places of worship there are in Alberta, in addition to the cemeteries, community centers, uh, faith-based schools, but it certainly would be in the thousands. So I think we can cover a lot. And it's depending on demand. Some of them may not feel a concern. Some of them may already have invested in adequate security infrastructure and they don't need the funding. But this will be here for those who do need it. And um, as I've said to, to Pastor, I want to make sure that that even though they've already spent money on security, that they can retroactively uh, obtain funding to be reimbursed for those costs. Thank you, Premier. Oh, sorry. Place. Uh, just a follow-up, actually, for, for Minister Shandro, as the Justice Minister, I'm curious because, uh, you know, when we see these protests, I'm wondering if you've seen the video itself of, of police pushing back against those counter-protesters yesterday. Are these kind of actions um, justified? I think the criticism that we keep hearing is that there isn't enough being done to push back against these people are continually there causing these noise complaints every weekend. Mm -hmm. And then we see this kind of action suddenly against counter protesters happening. What do you make of this and have you seen the video? Well, as, as Premier pointed out and as a, a former member of the, the Calgary Police Commission, um, Premier is exactly right. The, the Calgary Police Service is accountable to the Calgary Police Commission. So um, I look forward to the Calgary Police Commission being able to um, look into any concerns that um, a, a member of the, the public in Calgary have regarding any of the actions and for the, the Calgary Police Commission to be able to, to resolve those concerns. Thanks, Minister. And I just want to do another uh, call for any questions from the floor before we hop over to the phones. All right, perfect. Uh, hey there, Sid Bizarre of Rebel News. Um, I not sure if my question would be best directed towards you, uh, but right now, of course, you're investing in religious infrastructure, but I think many around the province have the, a concern that you may not be uh, best protecting their religious freedoms, as we've seen with Pastor Arthur Pulowski. Uh, he still remains behind bars. This is well over 30 days. Uh, if you could just comment on that situation and maybe uh, perhaps ease some concerns or just uh, give some light to that situation. So in, in Canada, we have something called the rule of law, where courts are responsible for adjudicating uh, criminal charges against individuals, not politicians. So uh, we have an independent judiciary. Uh, that individual, I understand, uh, has been uh, detained under, uh, uh, by the police because of multiple breaches of terms of release, uh, court orders, uh, as well as uh, an incitement to, uh, an alleged incitement to violence uh, at the Coots border crossing blockade. And so uh, that individual has all of the rights of any individual uh, under the Canadian legal system, uh, they are presumed uh, guilty and, sorry, excuse me, presumed innocent until proven guilty, of course, in our system of law. And uh, they have a right to access to counsel. Uh, they have all of the, that individual or any other individual has all of the same legal rights as anybody. So this is a matter that is before the courts. Um, and, um, uh, you know, as, as, as a more general comment, um, I would just suggest that going to a very tense combustible situation and uh, inciting people to be willing to die and commit acts of violence uh, for their cause is uh, um, it, very likely to have legal consequences. And I would suggest that, uh, you know, nobody is, uh, is above the law. No politician, no um, person that calls himself a pastor is above the law. The rule of law applies uh, equally to everybody in our system of the rule of law. Thanks, Premier. And did you have a uh, follow-up today? Thanks very much. Uh, so we will hop over to the phone, seeing no more questions from the floor. Operator, can you please connect our first caller? Julianne, La Traverse, Radio Canada. Oui, bonjour. Uh, ma question est en français pour uh, Monsieur Kenny. Uh, le programme de protection pour uh, les établissements communautaires est sur pied depuis moins d'un an. Pourquoi c'était nécessaire, selon vous, de déjà augmenter son financement? Merci. Uh, Nous avons annoncé ces subventions pour les communautés vulnérables l'année dernière, avant le, le ciblement des églises dans l'été de l'année dernière. 
Alors, euh, on a vu euh, énormément de demandes pour les subventions, pour la sécurité euh, parmi les communautés vulnérables. Et alors, euh, nous avons décidé de d'augmenter le programme pour répondre aux besoins. Parce que la sécurité publique est une obligation publique, c'est une ob obligation du gouvernement. Et particulièrement quand nous, par quand nous euh, parlons des communautés vulnérables, comme l'Église où je, me, je suis maintenant, c'est une petite communauté de foi, euh, des réfugiés euh, d'origine vietnamienne, et ils n'ont pas beaucoup d'argent, mais il faut qu'ils euh, investissent dans le renforcement de sécurité pour leur église pour prévenir une autre attaque. Euh, alors, euh, nous croyons que c'est nécessaire euh, d'avoir les fonds disponibles aux communautés comme ça. Euh, on a mis en, moi, j'ai mis en place un tel programme au niveau fédéral et je peux vous dire que ça, ça a sauvé euh, les mosquées et, et les synagogues euh, des actes de, de vandalisme sévère avec les améliorations dans leur infrastructure de, de sécurité. Alors, je crois que c'est un bon investissement euh, de l'argent de contribuables pour aider ces petites communautés à se protéger. And Julian, did you have a follow-up question today? Oui, merci. Yes, Monsieur Kenny, vous avez dit que cet investissement, cette subvention a prévenu les actes de vandalisme, mais je me demandais en quoi le fait d'augmenter la sécurité d'un lieu fait qu'on va voir moins d'actes de vandalisme, selon vous. Oui, alors, ce n'est pas, pas euh, suffisant d'avoir ces investissements dans l'infrastructure de sécurité. Il faut également avoir plus d'action au part des euh, policiers contre les, euh, les actes de haine, euh, les, les, les attaques euh, euh, contre les communautés vulnérables. Alors, euh, nous avons une... Euh, nous avons créé un bureau euh, au, à l'échelle provinciale pour coordonner les efforts de toutes les agences policières euh, contre euh, les crimes de haine. Alors, euh, on va également nommer un représentant du gouvernement pour euh, identifier parmi les communautés vulnérables s'il y a autre action nécessaire au part de, des agences d'enforcement, les agences policières. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please connect our last call of the day? Catherine Gurkowski, Operator Today. Thanks for taking my question. I wanted to follow up on an answer, well, actually just by the Premier now, but about, um, but also Associate Minister Yassine. Um, you, you mentioned working with, with the police for this, this new hate crimes initiative. Police tend to be uh, reactive when there is a crime that has already taken place, and I'm wondering, What type of steps are you going to take to prevent hate crimes from happening in the first place? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Catherine. So, as uh, Minister Yassine reminded us, we appointed a few months ago a position for province-wide coordination of police response to hate crimes to ensure that there is coordination. Um, and in addition, uh, we'll be making it, uh, Minister Shander was alluding to this, uh, we will shortly be appointing somebody to specifically investigate a spate of apparent hate crimes that we saw last year uh, against vulnerable women. Uh, I'll quote from the throne speech. Um, All Albertans deserve to live free of fear and prejudice, yet too often we see people from minority communities targeted by acts of hatred. To address this, the government will launch a review of recent uh, apparently hate-motivated incidents working with police to identify common patterns and to make recommendations on how better to prevent such crimes in the future. So that appointment will be forthcoming. I, I do want to commend police services for having been, I think, much more um, forward-leaning on these issues. Many of them have community liaisons that keep in touch with vulnerable communities, see where the, see if they're uh, facing um, uh, hatred uh, being directed at them, and uh, so there is, I think, a lot of proactive police work. But let's be let's be honest, um, you, you can't have a police officer in front of every vulnerable community institution 24-7. Uh, it's just not possible. And so these communities end up having to invest in their own security. And that's why we're bringing in this program, just to recognize that, that basic practical fact. Thank you, Premier. And uh, Catherine, did you have a supplemental to wrap things up today? Uh, yes, um, it's, it's an off-topic question for, for Minister Shandro. Um, 
you you set up the Alberta Municipalities Conference um, when asked by the Edson Mayor whether you're pl- planning to hire more Crown prosecutors, that there aren't any Jordan situations right now. Um, but the Crown Prosecutor Service says there's more than 3,000 cases that are beyond that 18-month threshold. I'm just wondering if you can clarify those comments, why you said there's no uh, Jordan cases when there's more than 3,000. Yeah, and, and, and Catherine, I think I made that clear. I corrected. I was told something that was incorrect, um, and I took responsibility for repeating something that was incorrect and apologizing for it. And so um, I, I've made that clear. Um, so uh, happy to do that again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister. That wraps things up today. Thanks so much for being here.